Today I'm going to show you how to do this really cool stretch effect and how to animate it. Oh yeah! What's up guys, my name is Fonso, welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. This tutorial will be divided in three main pillars. The first one being how to create the stretch effect in 2D in Photoshop. The second one will be how to animate it in After Effects. And the third one will be how to create the circular effect while still being animated. So this is going to be pretty fun, so stick around, grab your snacks, get comfortable, and let's get cracking! So for this first step, we're going to open the picture in Photoshop and remove the background with just one click. I'm not going to get into the details of how to get a clean result here, but if you'd like to learn more about this technique, I've got a whole video covering the subject. You can check it out with the link below or in the info card after you watch this video. Basically, what we're trying to do here is to make a compilation of all the colors going from the very top of the image to the very bottom. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Once we remove the background, duplicate the layer. Start by selecting the colors of the hat, press Ctrl or Command T, and whilst holding down Shift, stretch that selection to make it way wider. Then repeat the process to the bottom. Export the cutout of the dude separately as a PNG, then mute the layer and stretch the color strip to be a lot wider. You can even crop the composition since we're not going to go back to it after this step. Finally, export this as a JPEG. To finish this first step, you could mask out the extra bits on the left hand side, like so, and call it a day, but I'm going to animate this bad boy. So for the second step, you're going to want to import your cutout and your strip to After Effects. Place them in your composition and align them as you wish. Mask out the extra bits on the left just like you would on Photoshop. Add a new solid, create an ellipse mask and feather it a lot to create a shadow under our cutout. Add a busy warp effect and stretch the right hand side of the color strip until you're happy with it. Set the quality to 10 and adjust the two corners on the left to preserve the alignment. You can go back and forth until you're happy with the look. Now add the first instance of CC light sweep effect. We'll use it to create some highlights on the side and suggest that the strip is actually bending towards us. Make it vertical, set the shape to linear, width to around 300 and intensity to about 20. Duplicate this effect to make a shadow on the left hand side. Set the color to black and make sure that the light reception is set to composite, otherwise it won't show. Right, we're starting to get there, time for the animation now. Parent the stretch layer and the shadow layer to the cutout layer. That's a lot of layers. This will allow them to follow any transformation applied to the latter so that we don't have to repeat the process several times. Solo the cutout to move it off screen and then place a few keyframes to bring it back into frame quickly and then let it drift slowly. Bring back all the layers and create a new mask on the stretch layer. Set it to intersect and make sure it does actually intersect with any other masks, otherwise you're gonna get this. It actually took me a long time to realize that I was missing just a tiny pixel. Once you're done with it, you can animate the path of that last mask to reveal itself from left to right. Then if you're feeling fancy, you can add the background image, you can have a LUT, you can have a camera and add some wiggle, because why not? Turn the layers and the background image into 3D objects. We could actually go really crazy with the animation on that, but um, let's stay on track for now. Push back the background layer into the z-axis a lot and then scale it back up again to fill in all the frame and then some. Duplicate the stretch layer, add a tint effect and set both colors to black. Remove the first two masks and add a new one that goes across the whole width. Feather it a lot and place it below. You might have to play around with the opacity and the feather to get a nice looking shadow. Here I fiddled with the animation keyframes again to tighten up the whole thing and make it flow a little bit better. But feel free to make this however you like. Finally, for this second step, I added an adjustment layer with the curves effect just to push the midtones up a bit. At this point, the animation is ready to export, but feel free to add some text if you're feeling absolutely nuts. And now for the final part! To get this circular effect, I duplicated the composition, deleted the Bezier warp from the stretch layer, and added a polar coordinate effect to it. To get the layer to turn into a circle, you need to set the conversion type to rect to polar and the interpolation to 100. Oh yeah, and also you need to delete the mask because I forgot to do it at first and it's ugly. <laughs> now place the layer behind the cutout and fit it in place, parent it to the cutout and add a CC lens effect. Using two keyframes, I animated the size to go from 0 to 100. And that's how you get the circular stretch effect and how to animate it. Fwah! So there you go, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you did and you didn't learn my accent, you can like this video, get subscribed and hit the notification bell. 
If you're wondering what to watch next, I recommend you to watch this video right here. Thanks again for watching. My name is Francois. See you in the next video. Woo! That went really wrong really quick. <laughs>